Good morning and a very warm welcome to Christ Chapel where I am recording this service of Holy Communion for you. I'm delighted that you're able to join me. Our service this morning begins on page 236 of the prayer books and our collect and our readings for this second Sunday after Epiphany can be found on page 69. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. We say together. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments, and all the law and the prophets. We say together, Lord, have mercy upon us, and write these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who dost govern all things in heaven and earth, mercifully hear the supplications of thy people, and grant us thy peace all the days of our life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The epistle is taken from the letter to the Romans, starting at chapter 12, verse 6. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministry, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectioned to one another with brotherly love, in honour preferring one another, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Here ends the epistle. The Holy Gospel is written in the second chapter of the Gospel of St. John, beginning at the first verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, They have no wine. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? 
mine hour is not yet come. His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. After there were set there six water pots of stone, after the manner of purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece, Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, Draw out now, and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom, and saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee, and manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed on him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We join together in the words of the Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Loving God, I pray that you will take these few words that I have prepared and use them for your glory. Amen. Well, I wonder when was the last time that you went to a wedding? Of course, as a member of clergy, you get to go to more of your fair share of weddings, and many, of course, in this beautiful chapel. And we long for the time when couples will indeed be married here again. So this morning, this passage feels perhaps especially poignant. It's a long time since we were able to gather for such a celebration. And this certainly sounds as if it was an amazing party. I wonder how this first miracle of Jesus sits with us today. This is a strange thing for Jesus to do, isn't it? It seems almost frivolous, and yet John records it right at the start of Jesus' ministry. In Matthew, we would be reading about Jesus' baptism or the temptation in the wilderness. In Mark or Luke, about Jesus commanding unclean spirits and healing Simon's mother-in-law or preaching in the temple. You would have thought that having called the disciples, Jesus would get down to the important business of teaching them. You would expect spiritual and intellectual formation, perhaps time away as a small group to share and pray with them. But no, they go to a party. And what a party. A wedding feast would have lasted about a week. They were great occasions with family and friends coming from far and wide. 
Weddings were and are a wonderfully human thing. By that I mean you get to see people really letting their hair down. People dress up. They dance badly in ill-fitting shoes. They eat and drink perhaps too much, and hopefully there's a lot of love and laughter. Jesus plunges his disciples into the fullness of humanity. I don't know how you imagine Jesus at this celebration. I don't see him sitting there with a serious face or arriving at the last minute simply to perform a miracle. Jesus is fully human, and as such, I see him joining in wholeheartedly with this celebration of human love. This is a party where he transforms what is ordinary, water, into extraordinarily good wine for rejoicing. He gives us so much more than simply a picture of a great wedding. He gives us a picture of the kingdom of heaven. I'd like to spend just a couple of minutes thinking about who was at the wedding and their reactions to Jesus. First, there is Mary, Jesus' mother. Reading between the lines of the text, in the middle of the festivities, she realises, or someone tells her, that there is no more wine. This would have caused much humiliation for the couple and for their families. What to do? I don't know if you have secret family codes for when disasters occur at get-togethers. I'm sure I'm not the only family that has F-H-B. It stands for Family Hold Back. In other words, please don't eat all the pies. It seems it's too late. All the wine is gone. And here is Mary. She brings the immediate need to Jesus. I try to imagine how I would have felt if my son had spoken to me as Jesus does to Mary. It seems at first simply like a rude brush off, but this is Jesus and there is always more. Maybe Jesus is telling her that he won't always be with her, that soon he will leave to announce his message of love throughout Israel. But doing so will lead to his rejection and death. Mary is here at the beginning of her son's ministry and she will be there at the hour of the cross when the new wine of divine love is poured out for all. Whatever the true meaning of Jesus' words, Mary appears to instinctively know that he will do something. She brings the need to Jesus and she leaves it with him. Secondly, there are the servants. There were six stone jars at the wedding. Each would hold 20 or 30 gallons of water used for purification. I wonder what went through the minds of those servants when Jesus asked them to fill the jars with water in the middle of a wedding, when they'd run out of wine. It must have seemed like a waste of time, a ridiculous task, and even more preposterous to draw from the jars and present a cup to the chief steward. All I can say is that in my experience, when Jesus calls us to do something, well, it's hard to get away from that call. Jesus calls ordinary people to join in with the extraordinary purposes of God, and here their trust and their faith is rewarded, and there is an overflowing abundance of good harvest. All of this great wine isn't only about the ability to have an amazing party late into the night, although that might have had something to do with it. But there is more. The abundance of wine is a sign of God's coming kingdom. As the prophet Amos cried out, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when the mountains shall drip with sweet wine, and the hills shall drip sweet wine. The Black Lives Matter movement and this pandemic have shone an uncomfortable light on our unconscious bias and on our privileges. Only in this last week we have been shocked by the quality of lunches provided for children not receiving free school meals at the moment. And we ask, how can this be happening in 2021? 
And yet, this sign shows us the abundance of God's kingdom, of Jesus' love and compassion and grace that has no borders. The abundance of God is not confined or bought or preferentially given. And lastly, there are the wedding guests. We don't know if word got around about where all the wine had come from. The servants knew, but the steward didn't understand. He thought it strange that the bridegroom had saved the best for last. Wasn't it Francis of Assisi who said, preach the gospel at all times, when necessary use words? We will never know which of the guests at the wedding might have seen and understood what happened that day. We will never know who may come to know Jesus through the seeds that we have sown in our words and our actions. In his Gospel, John leads us gradually toward the significance of the wedding at Cana. Beginning with John the Baptist, he says that the next day John names Jesus as the Lamb of God. Again, the next day, the disciples follow Jesus. The next day, Jesus goes to Galilee. That's day four. The wedding at Cana begins with the words, on the third day, a symbol of Jesus' resurrection. And placing the wedding on this seventh day echoes the day of fulfillment after the six days of creation. The seventh day echoing the final day when God will be all in all, the wedding feast of the Lamb to which we are all invited. As it says in Revelation, for the marriage of the Lamb has come and her bride has made herself ready. In Matthew and Luke's Gospels, the kingdom of God is compared to a wedding feast. And here at the wedding in Cana, Jesus' miracle is a symbol of God's abundant love and grace. I am aware that a picture of ever-flowing wine might not be helpful for everyone, just as to focus on a wedding celebration may be painful for some people. But the real focus of this story is the celebration and joy that flow from the abundant, life-giving love of Jesus Christ for us all. Jesus brings the disciples to the wedding feast to give them a picture of the kingdom of God, where all inhabitants have life and life in all its fullness, where the waters of our broken humanity are transformed into joy. My prayer for each of us this morning is that like Mary, we may come to Jesus in faith, knowing that he hears us and answers us when we cry out to him. May we come like the ordinary women and men who were servants at the wedding, trusting in God's call and following his leading in our lives. May we receive and share the abundant love and grace that is found in Jesus Christ. We are, of course, unable to take a collection this morning, but you might like to use this time to go onto the St Barnabas website and to give electronically. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven.
Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church, militant here in Durham. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee, most merciful, to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes and governors, and especially thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto her whole council and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and indifferently minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and curates, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and specially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name, for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom, Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours and intend to lead a good life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hear also what Saint Paul saith. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world 
to save sinners. Hear also what St John said. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Amen. We pray together. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual mem mem memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who, on the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For well, this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen.
Let us pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy humble servants, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy and lively sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that all we, who are partakers of this holy communion, may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits but pardoning our offences, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. We say the Gloria together. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill toward men. We praise thee, we bless thee. We worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Founders Prayer we give thee humble and hearty thanks, O most merciful Father, for the memory in this place of Edward Allen, our founder and benefactor, by whose benefit this whole college of God's gift is brought up to godliness and good learning. And we beseech thee to give us grace to use these thy blessings to the glory of thy holy name, that we may here fulfil the good intent of our founder and become faithful servants to thee and to our country, and at last be made partakers in thy heavenly promise of the life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be amongst you and remain with you and those whom you love and pray for, this day and always. Amen.